Marking on hermetic motor compressor equipment, 440.4. First thing I'd like to say is, just go to mycolt.com slash app. Go download the app. And you know, you click right here and you click on motor calculation. Bing, bong, done, finished, we're out of here. If you're air conditioning equipment, you go right over here. Uh, motors, serve, oh here, go to cooling. Click on it. It might look a little different now. And that's it. We're all done. Bada bing, bada boom. But let's go to the calculations. 444B says the equipment nameplate must contain the manufacturer's name, rating and voltage, number of phases, minimum conductor opacity. There you go. And the maximum short circuit ground fault protection device. This example here says, hey, I don't care what all this is doing here. I look over here, it says minimum circuit opacity 30.4 amps. And then John, 30.4 amps. We go to table 310, 16, 75 degrees C column. And it's going to be, I think, a 10 gauge wire rated 35, 35 amps at 75 yes. degrees C. And I ignore the obelisk on the top of the table because it might confuse me, that give me the impression that I cannot exceed 30 amp protection on that 10 gauge wire. And then it says maximum fuse or maximum circuit breaker. Well, we go to 240.6A1, the table. And it'd be a 50 amp breaker with a 10 gauge wire. And this is another thing that drives dinosaur nuts. But, but Vince. <coughs> why, why did you directly come to me when you said because dinosaur? Because I, I haven't talked <laughs> to you in a while. But that wasn't a threat. <laughs> that wasn't a threat. But Vince, you're a contractor, electrician. You're, you're all of us. The same thing, instructor, the whole deal. Now you messed me up. <laughs> Darn it. You were going to ask him something. This had to do with, oh, okay. With the marking. Okay, no, Vince, mm -hmm. the 50 amp breaker, is it gonna protect the 10 gauge wire in, in case the 10 gauge wire shorts out? Is it gonna trip the breaker? I would think so. Really quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, that takes care of that. So we're not trying to protect the wire in the event of an overload, right, Eric? How do we control the load on the wires then? I mean, how do we control the overload? It's done on the load side. But where? Well, yeah, if you're at a... I, I got an air conditioner you right got an air here. Conditioner. Yeah, it's... Okay, how is the load being controlled that I don't overload the wires? Well, you've got internal overloads internal. on the compressor motor. Thank you, stop. It's done by the equipment. The equipment itself controls the amount right. of load. So I don't have to worry about overload protection. I only have to worry about short circuit and ground fault protection of 10 gauge wire on a 50 amp breaker that is right. going to instantly trip the breaker. These are short circuit and ground fault protective devices. This is not overcurrent protection. It's kind of like a motor, except motors, Brian, you got to get into it, you got to get to the full load. You got to you gotta have to design that. And you guys went all into that whole. This is a big science and overload protection. Short circuit ground fault protection. Obviously, you can run the wire and get the breaker. Fine. I mean, that's just use this number here and Couple seconds. put it in there. It's the overload protection becomes serious. There's a, there's a lot of involved. Air conditioning, it's automatically done by the manufacturer. So all I have to do, so I don't have to worry about any of the information that's on this nameplate. So let's go to an example. Here's an example of a real nameplate. This says the compressor draws 23.1. This says the fan draws 1.2. This says the minimum opacity is 31.4, and this says the maximum protection is going to be 50 amperes. So, John, if this says minimum circuit amp, I can ignore all of this. I'm just an electrician. I'm just trying to find a wire there. I go to the nameplate. It has to give me all this information. It says 31.4. I go to the 75 degree C column, but I'm not running Romex. There you go. That's the key. Be careful there. Okay. So, John, 310, 16, 31.4 is going to give me what size wire? 31.4, you are at a 10 gauge. 10 gauge wire, bada bing, bada boom. Now what size protection? It says give me 50 amp breaker, what size breaker? That's a, it says 50 amp it breaker. It says 50 amp breaker, what size breaker? 50 amp breaker. 50 amp breaker, 10 gauge wire, and the 10 gauge wire is protected by the 50 amp breaker against short circuits and ground faults. Now, there is a rule in uh, 356.109, and some people misunderstand this, and Mario, put this on here, 60 degrees C on this liquid type that some people think that you cannot put, um, you have to, <laughs> okay, liquid type flexible non-metallic conduit, and maybe there's some other wire methods also, they say that you cannot load 
the current on a conductor that is going to exceed the temperature rating of the liquid type flexible non-metallic conduit. And I think there might be another wiring method as well. Okay, and liquid type flexible non-metallic conduit is marked at 60 degrees C. That means that the wires that's going to be in this particular example here could not exceed a certain current that would raise the temperature above 60 degrees C. So let's go over to table 31016. Okay, yep. let's go to 31016 first for a second, and let me finish my thought here. Might be wrong that if it's a 10 gauge wire, John, a 10 yep. gauge wire, how many amps? We talked about this, okay. that if you put this amount of current yep. on this wire, it's going to raise the temperature. And at 60 degrees C, 10 gauge wire, how many amps would it take that it's going to get us to 60 degrees C? 30 amps. So if I put 30 amps on 10 gauge wire, you know, according to the table, it's going to get to be 60 degrees C. So if this rule tells us on 336, dot 10 9 that you cannot load this wire so that the wire is greater than 60 degrees C that means we cannot load this wire more than 30 amps right if that's the case then we measure this what is this 23.9 plus 1.2 that's 24 that's 25.1 mm -hmm. what happens sometimes John some people think well wait a minute now you have 31.4 on there right well so you can't put that using liquid tight flexible non-metallic conduit because that's going to exceed the temperature and they fail to realize this 31.4 is calculated this way. 23.9 times a magical number. What magical number do you think it's going to be? 125 percent. 125% plus the 1.2 yep. and that's going to be 31.4 but the actual load is 23.9 plus 1.2 so you can always use liquid type flexible non-metallic conduit for air conditioning equipment. That's never going to be a question. Research? My only comment is that per the product standard, liquid type flexible non-metallic conduit, if does not have a temperature marking on it at 60 degrees C, it may be marked 75. <clears throat> okay, so what <coughs> research is saying is, Mike, you don't have to mark 60 degrees C on here according to the product standard. I'm sorry because that's automatically 60 degrees C if it's not marked. I'm gonna mark it 60 degrees C just so I can drive people nuts, so they understand that it's 60 degrees C, and then, of course, we're fine. So this, I think, was important for those people that might think there's an issue here. Let's go to another example. Oh, that was the only example. That's it on air conditioning. <laughs> Thank you.